comes to computers, you can excuse the Japanese, their youthful enthusiasm. They got into the game decades after the Americans and with little technology of their own. Now, they've built the second largest computer industry in the world. It's not just Japanese children who are enthralled. Adults spend hours in specialized shops like this, reading up on the computing news and digesting the latest ideas. But Japan has a problem. It's strong in computer manufacturing, but as the computer industry develops, it's software, the programs that make computers more than dead boxes, which is becoming increasingly important. Writing software is more about creativity and imagination than technology in any traditional sense. And, as every Western barroom expert on Japan knows, while the Japanese are past masters at copying high technology, their weak point is coming up with creative ideas of their own. Try telling that to the Ikawa family. Haruki and Erika Ikawa spend most evenings in front of the box, but they're glued to software programs, not television programs. They're made by a company called Nintendo, and the small computers which run them, they're called the Famicom, are well on the way to becoming as much a part of family life as a video recorder or a fridge. More than one in three Japanese families has one. Nintendo's software characters, like the best-selling Super Mario Brothers, are now as popular with kids in the United States as in Japan. Nintendo's sales there last year accounted for a fifth of all the toys sold in American shops. Charles Elliott, an electronics analyst who lives in Tokyo, has followed Nintendo's progress for 10 years. He believes it's clever ideas which have allowed Nintendo to brush aside the opposition. The software really is superior and that makes the game extremely enjoyable to play with, especially if you're comparing it with one of the old uh, games that was launched by some of the American computer software makers a couple of years ago. Um, a Nintendo computer game might have about 50 or 100 high spots in it where you're trying something especially difficult. Um, if uh, an animal appears inside a game, uh, if it's a flying duck, the duck might dodge behind a cloud when you're trying to shoot at it. All those type of new gimmicks are much more enjoyable than the old style. The secret of Nintendo's extraordinary success is in this room. No cameras ever been allowed in before, and great care was taken to hide all the new software. Here, Nintendo's software engineers dreamt up the Super Mario Brothers, and they're now dreaming up their successors. Mm. This is Shigeru Miyamoto. Japanese youngsters call him the god of games. Mm. In America, he'd be pampered and probably a millionaire. But this is Japan, and the creative cauldron of Nintendo is a bit of an anticlimax. Although one game produced by Mr. Miyamoto and his colleagues can earn Nintendo several hundred million dollars, they're paid ordinary salaries, and they turn up for work in the company uniform. So why don't they seek their fortune elsewhere? Mm, uh, <laughs> That's a difficult one. Well, we're not paid glamorously for developing games which sell well. But the company is a sponsor. It encourages and pays for us to visit museums, to go to movies or even short trips so that we can get inspired. So everyone's happy to work for the company, especially as we get the prestige for being associated with it. The Nintendo engineers even write their own music on computer. The company's showing that, in one area of software at least, the Japanese aren't just successful, they can wipe the floor with their rivals. Nintendo now has 80% of the computer games market in the United States. But successful though Japan's computer games are, 
they're still only games. When it comes to most sophisticated software, most Western experts are comfortable in the belief that Japan lags far behind. One thing about a computer game is you don't need to go through a keyboard, so you don't need to know English. To, you can just put your creativity straight onto the tape. Uh, that's not true in any type of business use item. You have to use a keyboard then, and that means you need to know English language letters and be really familiar to start inputting stuff. In that type of flexible area, uh, I'd say that five years ago, they were five years behind, and now they're about six years behind. At least some of Japan's best computer brains agree. Kinishi runs ASCII, one of the country's largest business software companies. He spent his early career in the United States, where he helped develop the MS-DOS operating system, a basic piece of software on which nearly all computers depend. Although Nishi's company is now successful in Japan, when it comes to Japanese creativity and software, he's singularly unimpressed. Making has two, two meanings. One is uh, creating something from zero to the design. Uh, it's like, uh, it's called or sometimes originality. The another making is it's creating a one to 100,000. And it is my opinion that Japanese industry or Japanese people are good at making uh, one to thousand, which is called manufacturing. But uh, if we, if we should go to making zero to one, which is designing hardware, designing software, uh, Japanese uh, is still behind today. That's, I have to admit. But it may not be behind for long. This party of curious businessmen have come to see an electronic house which contains a revolutionary software system. A thousand computers control everything from the environment in the indoor garden to the non-stop piped music. In the kitchen, computers control video recipe demonstrations and then measure out the ingredients for any meal. Behind all this, a new computer operating system called Tron, which is both more flexible and more sophisticated than its American rivals. Tron allows any electronic gadget to be linked to any other, so in theory entire cities could be run from one computer system. Tron was invented by Ken Sakamura, a professor at Tokyo University. He thinks the very fact the Japanese had problems putting their language on computers will turn out to be a strength, not a weakness. Software is related to the way we think and the language we speak. We Japanese have 10,000 characters compared to your 26-letter alphabet, so it has taken us a long time to create software that can handle our language. But in overcoming this difficulty, we have developed superior technology. Some of Japan's big corporations are already wheeling behind Sakamura. Fujitsu, Mitsubishi, Hitachi and Matsushita are all developing Tron-based computers, while Toyota and Nissan are looking into a Tron-based computer for cars. It's already alarmed the Americans, who are scared Tron-based computers will eventually shut them out. In the decade ending 1987, the Japanese share of the world semiconductor market moved from 5% to something like 75%, and the US share fell from 90% to something like 13%. It's a dramatic reversal. So uh, as part of the continuation of that tsunami or tidal wave of activity, I think it's a fair bet to say that the Tron will be a viable product. It'll certainly be incorporated in Japanese computers, and that's pretty good because that's a world-class industry. But the Japanese challenge doesn't just lie in the future. In some areas of software, it's here now, and it's happening because of a radical change in the computer market. Most Japanese software, like this local government system in Hiroshima, has been custom designed, whereas Europeans or Americans would simply buy ready-made packages. That means the Japanese need many more software designers, and they're running out. To cope with that, the Japanese are designing package software themselves, and that's putting them into head-on competition with the rest of the world. 
konnichiwa. Bill Totten runs Ashisto, Japan's largest independent supplier of software packages. Two years ago, only 1% of the packages he sold were Japanese. This year, he expects it to be 20%. He now fears Western complacency about Japanese ability in software will take a heavy toll. There's a, been a tremendous surge in Japanese software uh, in the last two or three years. And I see it coming, the, the way the American or the four, especially American companies are running their business, they're gonna, it looks like they're about to throw away the good software business they've had here, just like they threw away the automobile business and the television business and the radio business and semiconductor business and many others. In the Okawa family, Nintendo's software is no longer limited to the children. Nintendo's now developed financial packages and it's planning a move into the home shopping market. Mr. Ukawa can check his bank account and his share portfolio with a bit of help from the Super Mario Brothers. The question now is whether other Western software firms will be any more resilient than Nintendo's competitors when they're faced with an assault in the more sophisticated software markets they still call their own. These companies are like they're a person standing on a ra railroad track and a big train bearing down them, doing everything you can to warn them, and yet they refuse to listen, and the train's getting nearer and nearer. If there's not major changes in the way American co companies are marketing their software in Japan, and probably in other countries overseas, they're going to lose their foreign markets. Once they lose their foreign markets, it's only a matter of time before they lose their own domestic market. Nintendo came from behind to chalk up its astonishing success in the United States. Now it's about to launch a major offensive in Europe. It's an ominous portent of what Japan may hold in store for the West's software package companies.